You know ChatGPT, you may even know Claude, but which is better? Well, today we're going to make them fight to the death to find out. And by fight to the death, I mean that we're going to use them collaboratively across a range of marketing and business related tasks, scoring them to determine which one is preferable. Let's go. All right, so first up, everyone knows what ChatGPT is, but Claude by Anthropic has been getting a lot of attention recently. Now, it actually works on a slightly different basis to ChatGPT. Anthropic is a constitutional AI company. And what that means is that they believe large language models like Claude should work from a constitution. That means that they give their large language model a set of principles to abide by. These are explicit values, like please choose the response that's least racist and sexist. So how is this different to OpenAI's ChatGPT? Well, ChatGPT also has values, but these are coded implicitly by the humans during the feedback process. Of course, other LLMs like ChatGPT also have values, but these are implicit and come as a result of the human training process. So basically, Claude is designed more specifically to be helpful and harmless. But of course, none of that really matters if it's rubbish. So let's see how good it is across a range of marketing tasks. Round one, summarizing text. In this test, we're gonna write an article for the Exposure Ninja website about how to do a particular task in SEO. Now I've written a book about this topic, so I wanna use the content of this book as the basis for my answer, because then I know it's gonna be accurate and it's also gonna sound like me. So let's see how the two stack up. Now the prompt I'm gonna use is I'm writing a 1500 word article for my digital marketing agency website on how to do SEO compared to analysis. I've attached the book I've written about SEO and I'd like you to suggest an article structure. I then copied and pasted the entire contents of this book into Claude. And that's one of Claude's main advantages. It has a 100,000 token context window, meaning you can upload about 75,000 words in your prompt. Sweet. So how did it do? I have to say it's done a fantastic job. I asked it to just write about competitor analysis. And there is a section in the book about competitor analysis. But because of the massive context window, it's also been able to take information from other parts of this book to create a plan for an article that actually is way more in depth on competitor analysis than even the book section was. I've then asked it to go and write the article. And again, it's done a fantastic job here. Like I asked it to, it's used words and phrases from the excerpt, which means that it sounds like me. I don't have to give it any tone of voice instruction because it's kind of used my own language in the article. Now this isn't publishable, but it is a fantastic start and I'm really impressed by this. Over to ChatGPT. So I gave it the same instruction, but I couldn't upload the full book because ChatGPT has a much smaller context window. So instead, I just copied and pasted the section from the book purely about competitor analysis. So how did it do? Well, it did a fairly good job despite having much less context. Of course, it understands the topic. It has enough knowledge about these sorts of topics that it can flesh it out with its own knowledge. I'm reasonably happy here with the structure of this and it's given a word count guide to each section as well. But then things got really weird. So I gave it the same follow-up prompt asking it to write the article using words and phrases from the excerpt where possible. And then a thing happened. It has totally gone off on one talking about Elizabeth Bennett, Mr. Darcy, and writing in a very odd style. I feel like I've entered a portal to a different universe. Seize the day, dear reader. Let Exposure Ninja unveil the world of opportunities that SEO presents. Let us be your Mr. Darcy in the vast, often intimidating digital ballroom. Oh, crikey. So impressed as I may be with the literary flourishes and the creativity, I said, please try that again, referring to the text in the original prompt when writing the article. It's done it, and it's gone straight back to Jane Austen land. The article has got significantly shorter. It seems to have forgotten most of the original instruction right at the start. No surprises, this was a clear win for Claude. Test number two, how well can these tools analyze data? Now in the world of digital marketing, everyone's least favorite thing is GA4, the latest version of Google Analytics specifically designed to alienate as many ordinary people as possible. So wouldn't it be great if LLMs were able to help us understand the quagmire of data that we get inside GA4? So what I've done is I've produced something very boring called an exploration in GA4, which basically shows the location of people that have taken a particular action on a website. Now we've got the country location, but we've also got the page on which they took that action. All very boring, don't worry too much about this. So what I did is I exported this data into a CSV file and then uploaded it to the two enemies to see who could help me process this data best. Now, despite Claude's massive context window, when I uploaded the CSV file, I got this error message. So I went back, 
cut half of the data out and fed it into Claude. I explained what the data showed and asked it a very broad question, how do I get more conversions and can you help me spot any areas where my website is underperforming? And it's pulled out some very broad observations here. The UK and the US have the highest number of conversions. Focusing marketing efforts in these areas could yield more conversions. Improve your conversion rate from India because you've got lots of traffic but not many conversions. All of these are correct. They're fairly common sense. But there's nothing particularly groundbreaking or insightful. So what about ChatGPT? Well, I uploaded the same CSV file to code interpreter plugin on ChatGPT and wow. <laughs> this is one of ChatGPT's true strengths in my opinion. Now it started off by looking through the data and it often does this to make sure it understands what the data is showing. There's usually a sort of cleanup phase at the start of these processes if it finds that the data hasn't been properly labeled and that's exactly what we got here. It says there's an issue reading the CSV file but it's able to fix that, relabel some of the headings and then get into the analysis later on or without any additional input. It adds its own column names and then analyzes the data identifying four different areas that it wants to explore further. And the insights here are pretty spot on. If you were a beginner to GA4, this type of insight is gonna be really useful to help you make some key marketing decisions. One of the most impressive things for me is it spotted anomalies in the data and then ran additional calculations to remove those anomalies in order to present more findings. It spotted some pages that we might want to optimize further and finally gave me some next steps. ChatGPT's code interpreter was excellent here, a very, very resounding victory. If you wanna keep up to date with the latest goings on in the world of AI for marketing, then subscribe to the Powered by AI newsletter at pbai.co. Each week, we'll curate the most important AI news for the world of marketing and send this to you via email. No longer will you have to trawl through the mountains of rubbish out there to work out what's relevant to you. We'll hand select it for you and deliver it into your inbox personally. So go to pbai.co to sign up for the newsletter today. How about making them do a little bit of maths? Now, I asked ChatGPT, what is the average conversion rate on mobile across all locations and pages? All it needed to do was find the total number of conversions and the total number of visitors and then just divide and come with, up with an answer. But when it started, it actually got the answer wrong, saying it was infinity, possibly because of some anomalies. So it then filtered out some of those potential anomalies before running the test again. Now, it hasn't really broken down its working, so I can't see where this is going wrong. But it's come up with an answer of 16%, which is way higher than the approximately 7%, which it actually should be. Now, I was a little surprised that it got this wrong, given how strong Code Interpreter usually is at doing this type of work. So what about Claude? Well, I asked the same follow-up question. What is the average conversion rate? Now, we do have to bear in mind that Claude was working with a much smaller file, the half as much data because it couldn't process the whole thing. But it's broken down its calculations, and because it's broken it down, we can see the logical train of thought that it's taken. Now, it's still not quite correct. The answer is about 7%, but we are at least close. So neither of them got it right, but Claude did at least show it's working so we could potentially understand where it might be going wrong. Even so, nil point. Challenge number four, build a marketing strategy. Now, as a professional marketer, some of the marketing strategies I see being made on ChatGPT are frankly hilarious. So this is one of those tasks that yes, these tools can do it, but the stuff that they produce is often total rubbish. We have to bear in mind that large language models are best as a co-pilot, not a slave. If you just ask it to do something, it will do that even if it doesn't quite know how to do it or what good looks like. Whereas if you're working with it collaboratively and bouncing ideas off, you get a much higher quality output. Even so, let's just prompt these tools to come up with a marketing strategy for a fictional, regional law firm and see what they produce. I gave a fairly detailed prompt explaining that I'm a marketing manager for a regional commercial law firm and I've been tasked with increasing inbound leads to the website. I've explained that the website needs redesigning to focus on conversion rate and then I've asked it to create me a plain English marketing plan that focuses on return on investment. I've given it some detail about the channels that I want to focus on and I've also asked it for some creative content ideas that could work well across those channels, which is one of the most challenging pieces of this question. I've given it a moderate budget of £250,000 per year. So how did Claude do? This was a very brief broad brushstrokes answer, which to be honest, isn't that much use. There's nothing wrong per se, but there's just not enough detail 
for it to be really impactful. I would have to go back to it and interrogate it basically on every single bullet point to come up with something meaningful that I could start working from. But I asked the same question to ChatGPT and got a much, much more detailed answer. There's actually not a huge amount in here that as a professional marketer I would disagree with. This is a pretty decent plan. Yes, some of the content guides aren't particularly creative and aren't likely to get much traction, but I think you could brainstorm with it to come up with some better concepts here. It's also spotted that the website isn't going to be finished until the end of month four, so you don't want to really start the search ads until you're focusing those ads on the new website from month five. Like Claude 2, ChatGPT picked up on the fact that I wouldn't want to run my ads until I'd finished my website to make sure that I was driving the traffic to the best possible converting page. And it's given me a very general overview of some of the things I'd want to consider in my ad campaign. I was pretty happy with the approach on email marketing strategy. This is more or less the approach that I would take. I'd also add a pipeline automation piece in here as well, but maybe that's expecting a little bit much from an LLM. And whilst yes, some of these recommendations are a bit generic and lack a lot of detail, to be fair, the context I gave it was very limited anyway. Finally, it even gives me a suggestion on how I would allocate my budget. Of course, with ChatGPT being more detailed is obviously going to be a bit more impressive, but I think ChatGPT was a clear winner here. So far then, ChatGPT is 2-1 up, but Claude is incredibly impressive and has some additional benefits that ChatGPT doesn't, namely the fact that it is free, though like any free LLM, its usage is capped. It also has a much more recent knowledge cutoff, so ChatGPT has been trained up until 2021, meaning if you ask ChatGPT which is better for marketing, ChatGPT or Claude, it doesn't even know what Claude is yet because it didn't exist at ChatGPT's knowledge cutoff. But Claude's knowledge cutoff is 2023, so if you ask it the same question, it knows that ChatGPT is an AI system. But being constitutional AI, it's given a very diplomatic and soft answer. So I think the conclusion for marketers and people in business is, neither one of these tools is universally the best. They each have their strengths and operate differently in different scenarios. For me personally, I probably prefer Claude for writing, but ChatGPT for processing data. Code Interpreter is a machine. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. Which do you find yourself using more on a daily basis? Claude 2 or ChatGPT? Until next time, see you soon.